Hey, so I want to um, refer everybody who watches uh, my channel, and all, especially all my clients, to one video that I saw recently. I think it's probably the best, most honest discussion of what dog training is actually about that I think I've ever listened to. And uh, it's by Larry Crump. I believe the name of the video is, uh, not quite it. it was Real, Real Dog Training Talk About Real Dog Training Problems, something like that. Um, approximate that and look for it. It's about a 15 minute video. A uh, little backstory. I had, no, all, made a video after the Toronto ban on, on my prongs, collars, and e-collars and all that shit. And I, I, I flipped out. It looked like I was flipping out Larry. I didn't name names and, and whatever. But I was responding partially to like an offhanded comment he had made on Facebook that was whatever. I mean, it, it was probably, probably took it out of context by accident, and, you know, and, and I really just overreacted because I was angry, but I wasn't responding to him, and it kind of seemed like I was. And I actually <laughs> rewatched the video. It, it, it seemed really fucking personal because at, at one point I talk about, like, um, they say some shit about, like, Malinois, and I was talking about guys. Uh, from the sporting world, from like competition and stuff like that. But this guy Larry got um got <laughs> it's like in all of his videos. So it really looked nasty at one point. It really wasn't. It was about something larger. In any event, I don't know how much of this is due to guilt because it, it seemed personal. I fucking hate the internet. I hate the uh, shit talking nature of the internet, YouTube. You look at the fucking comments of YouTube, it's always just people just saying horrible shit, racist shit, just anything goes. Um, and it tends to bring out the worst of people. And then when you get like YouTube fucking wannabe personalities talking shit back and forth, especially in the dog training industry, there's it's just gross. It's really disgusting. So part of it is I, I felt embarrassed afterwards because I, I felt like I was almost by accident participating in that, which I wasn't. Although, I, you know, I reserve the right to act like a nutcase and, and shriek about topics, but I'm not going to do it about individual people. At least, uh, at least not uh, like a trainer. You know, maybe some purely positive Nazis and maybe a couple public figures, but not like a, you know, balanced trainer. It doesn't, even if I think the guy's a hack or whatever, it doesn't matter. I just, it's not my, it's not my job. It's, I'm not... This channel is mainly for my clients. I just want to show them kind of boring videos that are going to help them with their dog. I'm not really out to educate the public. I'm not out to make money off this shit. It's really just an effort of transparency and to kind of help my clients. That's it. So I think it's disgusting, like the whole YouTube culture and, and like this. I felt like a little bit like the Catch Me Outside girl, except I didn't go viral. So, um, for that, I, I, I was a little bit embarrassed. So how much of this is too embarrassing? I don't know, but the true, the fact of the matter is that it was the baldiest fucking video I have ever seen, and Larry, I gotta give you, to really take my hand off to you um, for the video that you posted. And I'll explain why in a second. Uh, also, I'm not gonna post Larry's name in this, or put it in the body of the description or anything like that, because I, you know, like, I don't wanna, like, piggyback off of someone else's name on fucking YouTube. Again, I don't care about YouTube, except for, you know, if people are generally interested in the dog training stuff, that's great, but it's mainly for clients and transparency. So I'm not going to do that, but if you watch the video, I just describe that name to go take a look. Here's what it's about. He describes the two poles of uh, dog training. Um, one, the beginning of the video is about an extremely aggressive dog. And he has to use a very, very, a highly aversive technique on the dog. Okay, it's the first six minutes, and it's, it's the type of thing you got to do sometimes, and it sucks. It fucking sucks. It's the kind of thing that we is not talked about publicly, and yet it happens sometimes. Um, the, and then the uh, the second half of the video, you know, like the next ten minutes, they're about um, the other end of the spectrum. A deeply fearful dog that he had that he kind of that he got over. He, I mean, he got the dog to get over his bullshit, and he did it mainly through 
positive reinforcement only yet. I believe he was describing a technique called capturing. Um, these sort of spontane or spontaneous behaviors that just reward when it, when it was it was demonstrated by the dog. So you're seeing basically like a, a positive only approach on, on the one end because that's what worked for that dog. And then like 1960 shit for this other dog thing. Was he going to make it without it? And to me, a good litmus test for the ethics of a trainer and a dog owner is what are you going, what are you willing to do for your dog or for another or for a dog in order to make sure that that dog doesn't have to be euthanized? How far will you go? And in that sense, Larry uh, Passon said that litmus test with flying colors. I mean, he he described he had the dog was redirecting and he just kind of had to hang the dog out on the dominant dog collar, um, which I, I don't. Through another, have a problem with it. I did something that, <laughs> if I have to do something like that, I got to do something which looks. I think it's a little bit easier on the trachea, but it looks worse. I'll, I'll actually spin it off. And I don't talk about that. And it's very exceedingly rare. But if I think that this dog is not going to get better, and I've exhausted all other options, and I'm convinced of it. Or if the dog is redirecting and I just have no choice, I think I'm really going to get hurt because it keeps the dog off me, I'll do that. Um, but what he said is just basically the same exact thing. Uh, it's just it's less motion. I, you know, you could debate all day which one's worse. They're both terrible, horrible. It's, it's traumatizing to the dog, and that's kind of the point. And it looks horrible. You know, like people will be like, want to call the cops on you. I'm going to fucking hang you in a second. No, off. Good boy. Come here. Come here, you baby. Um, and uh, it just looks terrible. And it sucks. Like, afterwards, you want to vomit. When, when you have, if you have to do these highly, these highly aversive kinds of corrections. And we don't talk about it openly. And I don't really think that, no, leave it alone. <laughs> I don't really think that we should. For the most part, but I, I think the fact that Larry, who is a highly respected individual in the industry, acknowledged it and explained it, it is huge. Because as long as we're sitting around and, and just kind of trying to present ourselves, we're, we're, we're letting positive only new age Nazis dictate the terms of debate. Because we're trying to sound like, no, no, we're just as new age as you are, but it's like, you know what? Sometimes some of the shit we got to do with a very small percentage of dogs, it's not going to be politically palatable, and it's not going to be PR friendly. And guess what? We know that. You think it, we're having a fucking good time if you got to hang a dog out like that because he's trying to bite you, or because he's so reactive with other dogs? Get the fuck no off! Oh my god! Yeah, he, he ruins like at least a third of the video. Um, do you think like like that doesn't affect us? Like we're all psychopaths, you know. Come on, man. Like it, it's horrible. It makes you want to fucking vomit when you have to do something like that. And you don't, certainly don't want to talk about it again, you know. And a part of you feels like, man, is this the right thing to do? But then you see the dog that had no hope get better. And uh, and for the next time it happens, which. You hope that it's never going to happen again in your career, but you're prepared in case you think it ever has to happen again. All right, well, I know what the end game is. And the end game is the dog's going to die or the dog's going to live. And I'm going to do what it takes to get that dog to live. And that's what Larry was describing. And I take my hat off to him. He takes a lot, a lot of balls. The single ballsiest video I've ever seen on the subject of dog, dog training, and I would recommend everyone to go watch it. And Larry, I, I can't take my hat off to you enough. Um, I really, really appreciate it. I appreciate you, all, appreciate you and all the work you do. I'm not putting your fucking name in the, in the title here. <clears throat> Probably won't even tag you on Facebook. Uh, let's stop it. By the way, does anyone want a fucking dog? <laughs> You were gonna be, yeah, I'm gonna train him like Healer used to fucking train his dog. You're gonna be drowned. Um, but you know, it's, it's it's not about Larry. It's not about me. What it is is about honesty and transparency. And the more we embrace that as trainers, I think the better off we'll be. You know, and uh, you do things for reasons with dogs always. 
And if you can logically explain something, I think it, it helps a lot. And, and Larry did that, and he just, it's very important that people understand that it's not always going to be super duper friendly. You know, every, a lot of, 90% of the dogs that come in are really aggressive and reactive. I call it JV aggression. They come in, it just happened the other night with a uh, big boy. Ferocious, ferocious in the car, ferocious smell aggression for 12 hours. I just relaxed. I, I gave him space. I didn't do it. I didn't confront him. I let I just followed safety procedure, gave him space. He calmed down. He started to trust me. Now we're best friends. Okay? And he, that's usually how it goes. And now it's going to be like gentle the whole way through. Although he's like real strong and tough. So maybe it's, maybe it's a little bit sharper with corrections, but um, I got it actually. I think it's going to be nice and easy. He's because he wants to stay right. We got a relationship, and that's what I'm going to use to train him mainly. Um, it's like that 90% of the time with aggressive dogs. Um, I would probably more, 95, maybe even 98. There's a very tiny percentage of highly reactive, aggressive dogs, spoiled dogs who have a confusion of hierarchy, genuinely dominant dogs, which are incredibly rare, um, but some dogs are naturally dominant in very particular domain, possibly with other dogs. That can be very tough, can be scary. Whatever, it, it's situational, but you can't pretend like every single dog, it's just gonna be about it being easy, you know? And that's just the way it is. And by the way, the second half of the video, they where he talks about fearful dogs, which are my favorite dogs to work with. I like the JV aggression cases, because they make, look, make me look good and they're easy, but I really love the fearful dogs, because they're the ones that are the most validating. You see them change, and you see the, really where they're no longer suffering at the end of it. And that, to me, is uh, the most rewarding aspect of what I do. I like seeing dogs that are clearly in pain and you just feel bad for them because they can't, like, they can't walk on their face with no holding on their surfaces. You kind of know, stupid, no off. Take the fucking ball and go, go, go blow your brains out, Dewey. Um, anyway, Dewey's not like that, clearly. But uh, that's the most rewarding aspect of what I did. And I learned from that video, uh, or gave me an idea for a, the dog that I had the most difficulty in my career with. So that was the part of the video I was probably most appreciative, because I really uh, learned something very important from it. So, again, thank you to Larry. Um, uh, that's it. I, I, I don't want to, because again, this is the personal nature, this makes me uncomfortable. But the most important thing are the ideas and the honesty and the transparency expressed in that video, and I cannot recommend it highly enough to anyone who's just interested in dogs or dog training. Um, and that is really what it, it represents, but just to complete both ends of the spectrum. You have to have the ball not just to do the aversive shit, but to be willing to, to just go basically purely positive, you know, to abandon ideology and be pragmatic and go with what works. And um, shit, if, if a dog, I thought the only thing that was going to work was, was just never correct and just purely um, uh, rewarding or whatever, you know, or make it, maybe negative punishment, take it someone with that's all I do. I, I think that they're going to require minimal correction. I think of correction more as guidance anyway. I don't really think of it as communication rather than punishment. But um, anyway, they might need it. You know, I mean, and I'll do it. I don't care. I want to go with what works because I, first of all, my reputation uh, rests on how effective I am as a trainer. That's the most important thing. So. There's a purely selfish financial motivation there. But really, I want to see the fucking dog get better, especially those fearful ones. You really feel bad for them. Um, some all I don't have an ideology. Okay, you go with what works, and that's the point, but you have to abandon your own comfort zone. Just like the dog has to abandon him, you have to do that as the owner and as the trainer. And that was this message I really took from the video. It was 
if you gotta fucking hold the dog out and hang him like that because he's, he's gonna die, otherwise you do it. If you want, if you have to just purely reward and then ignore the dog when it when it doesn't look confident, then you do that. But you do what it takes to help them because you know they're beautiful animals and they they deserve it. People don't always, whether it's the owners or just whoever, it, but the dogs just about all the time deserve a shot, and you and you got to give it your all for them. Um, and if so, for instance, if you're an owner and you're not willing to use an e-collar if you think they're torture devices, which is absurd, um, I won't even address shit like that because I think it's so silly. Then, and you would sooner give your dog up to a shelter and try obedience training or try don't do it <laughs> or try an e-collar. I, I, well, maybe you shouldn't own a dog. You might be a decent person in other aspects of your life. But not with animals, not with dogs. And I would, I, I think you're kind of a piece of shit. But that's just my opinion. <laughs> you know. Um, so you got to abandon your own comfort because at the end of the day, that's what's going to hold the dog back. Whether it's your own ideas, your own genius, whatever, it's going to, uh, it's going to prevent the dog's growth and healing. And that's what that video was about. And uh, again, thank you to Larry. So, a little long-winded, but it's a very important topic, and I think uh, I think he did a great job of explaining what effective training is really all about. So, please take a look at it.